right there. Today is a good day. We could have been dead, we could have been dead and gone, we could have been sleeping in our grave. But he allowed us one more chance. And because he allowed us one more chance, anybody want to give God some praise this morning? Because he allowed us the opportunity just to see a brand new day that we never saw before. God is good. Do I have any witnesses? God is good. God is faithful. And he's kind. Y'all put your hands together and give God some praise.
get it in our hearts. God, down through the years, you have been good to us. And we're still here by your grace and by your mercy. And God, we come, we come to you today thankful. Thankful for life. Thankful for health. And thankful for, for, for strength. God, send your spirit down here in this place today, God. Move through the hours, God. Lord, let us worship you in spirit and in truth. God, because without you, we wouldn't be here today, God. God, people are still being, their lives are still being taken by COVID, God. Yesterday, we buried a young man, 39 years old, because he lost his life to COVID, God. Lord, anybody that had that, that had that virus, God, and you let them see another day, because it could have been another way. And for that, we're thankful. We're thankful to be here today. Somebody here is dealing with the loss of a mother on today. Somebody here is dealing with the loss of a father on today. Somebody here is dealing with the loss of a loved one. God, comfort them. God, let them know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And nothing is impossible. Nothing is too hard for you, God. God, there's so much going on in the world, God. We got police brutality. We got black on black violence. God. But these people need to know that they need to pick up your sword, the Bible, and read it, and put down these guns, God. God, our, our children are being taken away, God. And we don't know why. The children are our future, God. God, and we need them. We need each other to survive, God. We can't harm each other. God, if you see, them, if you see somebody that's walking by with their head held down, Lord, give them the strength to pick that head up, God. God, and we don't know. We don't know when our time is going to be here down here on this earth, God. Lord, but as long as we're here right now, I'm going to tell you thank you. I'm going to tell you thank you. If I had 10,000 to come, I could thank you enough, God. God, in one of these old days, when it's your time to call and our time to answer, Give us a home somewhere in your kingdom. Well, we might be right on life eternally unto you. In the almighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Come by.
Let us stand all over the building. Praise God. Promote all blessings flow.
given today, God. We ask you to bless the ones who gave. Bless the ones who did not have to give. And God, we ask that you, uh, this offering that was taken up, be used for the purpose of building your kingdom, God. God, shower down your blessings upon us. God, shower down your favor over our finances, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in all, and, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Four verse says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarah, or Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. You may be seated in the presence of God. Today I want to talk from uh, the topic, a new beginning, a new beginning, new beginning. We all have experienced setbacks and failures throughout our lives. Sometimes we allow uh, these mistakes, setbacks and failures to enslave us to the point that we never enjoy the full Christian life that God has given us to enjoy. The setbacks try to keep us in bondage and keep us from getting what God has ordained for us. But I come to tell you today, Macedonia, that these setbacks are only setups to be blessed. Can I preach today? Uh, didn't you know, didn't you know you were going through the setbacks because God wanted to bless you? You were being positioned to be ready for what God has for you. Maybe your life didn't turn out the way you expected it because of the mistakes or decisions you made in the past. The truth is that we all made mistakes. We say things we wish we could take back. We do things we wish we could undo. We miss opportunities that we would have put that would have put us in a better position in life. Amen. Sometimes we make mistakes at work. We hurt the people we love and we even disappoint God. Amen. We are not perfect and God knows this. Look at somebody and say, we're not perfect. Oh, that neighbor got funny with you. Look at somebody. We're not perfect. He gives us chances after chances after chances to start over and try again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I challenge you to fix all of those things that need changing. Turn your backs to the past. Look forward to the future and believe that this time around things are going to be better. How many of you believe things are going to be better for you? How many of you believe that? How many of you want to get back on the right track? Yeah, yeah. How many of you want to give that relationship another try? That job another try? That school another try? Your walk with God another try? Your faith in God another try? Yes, yes. I'm here to tell you today that it is the first day of your new beginning. My God, my God, my God. Maybe some of you like to do the same things over and over and don't like to leave your comfort zone to try something new. And I don't know about you, but I like new challenges, new experiences, new opportunities. I have another opportunity to accomplish something new and take on bigger challenges. Amen. I have another chance to strengthen my relationship 
with God and to get closer to Him. Now is a good time to, for us to evaluate our walk with God by taking a close look at where we are in our relationship with Him. We need to self examine ourselves to see where we have been, where we are, and where the Lord wants us to be. Abram's father moved his extended family to the land of Canaan. And now that takes some type of faith, it takes some kind of faith to just pick up and move your family like that. He didn't get an offer letter starting or stating that he had a job waiting on him in Canaan. But he stepped out in faith. Abraham completed the trip that his father started. Abraham had to leave a lot of things behind. He had to leave the things he became so familiar with to finish the work God started it with his father. And sometimes, I want you to know that sometimes everybody can't go where you're going and everybody don't understand why you headed into the, another direction. Can I preach today? But when God tells you to move out, you better move out because your blessings may be wrapped up in your obedience. Abraham, Abraham was about to experience a new beginning. When you are experiencing a new beginning, there are a few important things you need to know that will be vital to your success. When you're starting a new beginning, you have to act beyond your comfort zone. A comfort zone it's a place or a situation where you feel safe or at ease. My Sister Rivers, it is where you feel confident and comfortable. Abraham had to leave his comfort zone. God told Abraham to leave his father's family and go to the land that God would show him. Abraham had to be willing to leave everything and go. Yeah, he had to go with God without even knowing where he was headed. He had to be brave and courageous. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. But sometimes you have to leave the very thing that you are familiar with so that you can move to the next level in God. And in the next level of your life, the book of Philippians, the third chapter, 13 verse says, you have to forget those things that are in the past and reach forward to the things that are ahead. You got to let go of the things that are keeping you from reaching your full potential. Don't, don't, don't allow mistakes and situations from your past prevent you from moving forward. My God, my God. You got to press your way through and don't give up. Many times you have to separate from the people and the things that are keeping you from reaching your full potential in God. Can I preach? If you keep hanging around the people who aren't doing the right things, then you will be influenced by them. And you will slowly, slowly start to backslide in your walk with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that, that you heard the saying that birds of a feather flock. You have never seen an eagle hang out with a pigeon. Am I making sense? And you've never seen a pigeon fly as high as an eagle. Yeah, yeah, well, Pastor, you know, I, I'm saved. I, I can hang around certain people now because I'm, I'm the little one up here. Don't hang around those types of people. And even if you're saved, there's some saved folk that 
you don't need to hang around. Oh, God ain't going to talk back to you. We should be living the life that Jesus lived with spiritual values rather than worldly values. We need to work at having a deeper knowledge of Jesus, a holy life, godly virtues, a clean social and domestic life, and an active prayer life. You got to make God priority in your life. You got to read your Bible and, and pray and worship more than you did before. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them I'm moving out of my comfort zone. Tell them I'm moving out of my comfort zone. Sister James, when you are starting a new beginning, you have to step out of faith. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, says that faith is the substance hoped for. I wish I had Sunday school. Yeah. And the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. In other words, you can't see it, but you believe it, that it's going to come to pass. Yeah, yeah. You can't see your breakthrough. You can't see your new house or your new car. Your money don't match up with it. But you have faith and you believe that what you ask God to do, it will come back. Abraham showed faith when he was obedient to God. He moved to the land of Canaan. It looked a lot and it took a lot of faith for him to leave everything behind and go to a new place to live. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know today that you can't get complacent. Your blessings could be waiting for you in another place. But you have to step out on faith and make the move. It may feel uncomfortable, but if you want something better, you have to move out in faith. Yeah, I, I'm sure you can think of a time when you had to make a decision to move somewhere else and you didn't know if it was the right move. But you decided to take a leap of faith and trust God. Am I making sense of faith? By stepping out of faith, you paved the way for your family to be blessed. Yeah, Abraham had strong faith in God when he left the land and people he knew. And in return, guess what? God blessed him and made his name great in all the nations. Even if you don't have a clue how things will turn out or how you're going to make it through, you need to just start moving out in faith. Sometimes you have to leave a job to get that promotion at another job. You have to get, you have to go get that graduate degree to get that higher position. You have to get that certification to get that manager's position. You have to leave that abusive relationship to find a better one. You have to get out of that old car to get a new one. You have to leave your home to get a new one. Y'all ain't gonna help me. I'm trying to help somebody. It's time for change. I refuse to remain in the same state. Something has got to change for the better. What are you going to do about it? The situation that's keeping you down. Don't be scared to move out of the place that you feel most comfortable. You need to go to a place where your ability and your determination can be tested. God wants to see you succeed. But you're going to have to do more. Look at somebody say, you got to do more. You know, the book of Hebrews 11 chapter says, without faith it is impossible to please God. So I challenge you to go above and beyond what you've been doing so far. There is something good waiting for you. You just got to step out in faith. Yeah, you got to start your new beginning. Whatever 
that new beginning may be for you, you got to step out in faith. When you start in a new beginning, Minister Murphy, third thing you need to know is that you should don't be discouraged by difficulties along the way. Yeah, don't be discouraged by difficulties along the way. I want you to know that in this life we will have our share of trials and difficulties as we pursue different dreams and goals in life. But we shouldn't allow these difficulties to stop us from reaching our purpose in life. Amen. You may experience a few setbacks while on this Christian walk. Oh, yeah. But whatever you do, don't give up on yourself or your dreams. Amen. Can I preach? Amen. Don't be distracted with the things of this world. But focus your attention on God. You press your way through. And keep God first. Don't, don't make the situation you're going through bigger than your God. Yeah, don't focus on the situation. You got to focus on God. I wish I had some church on that. The problem with some of us is that we start focusing on the issue and become frustrated when things don't go the way we want them. But you ought to keep God at the center. Yeah, you ought to keep your attention on God and you will see things turn around. Yeah, God, God will be with you even when you're going through a desert experience. The Lord is even when your marriage is looking dry, your finances are funny and, and it's looking dry, your health is looking dry, your job is looking dry, your school is looking dry. God is in the midst. Yes, he's in the midst. He's in the midst. He's in the midst and he's using these difficult times to help you grow in him. Jesus came so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Is there anybody want an abundant life? Yeah, he, he wants what is best for you. But you have to, you have to keep pressing through despite the difficult, despite the hard time, despite the trials and tribulations. You gotta step out and keep pressing. Just like Abraham was a stranger in a foreign land of Canaan. Okay. We are strangers in this world. Yes, yes. We are only passing through. Amen. So don't get caught up. Don't get caught up. Don't get caught up in the things of this world. I'm quite sure Abraham faced some complications along the way. But he didn't let them stop him from reaching his destiny. You should declare today that you will not be discouraged, but you will press your way through to what God has for you. Is there anybody going to press their way through? You yeah, press your way through to peace. Press your way through to joy. Press your way through to hope. Press your way through to whatever your new beginning is. You have to be like David and encourage yourself in the Lord. There's a reward waiting for you. Guess what? It's waiting for you here on earth and in heaven. Look, look at your name and say, I won't let anything stop me from reaching my destiny. I, I won't let anything stop me from reaching my destiny. When you start in a new beginning, Deacon Douglas, you have to renew your mind. You have to renew your mind. Abraham had to get his mind together. And he had to change the way he saw things. In order for him to be successful, he had to take on a whole new mindset to get through his journey. He had to leave his father's country, family, 
And watch this, and I'm going to mess some of y'all up. He had to leave the traditions behind. Y'all get quiet on Sometimes we get so caught up in the traditions and, oh, y'all ain't going to talk back to me. And always doing things a certain way that we can miss God. God is always doing something new. But we have to constantly renew our minds so that we can be ready to receive the new things that he has for us. Ever wonder why it bothers you to change? It's because your mind is not renewed. You need to upgrade your mind. You need to download the new mind software where Jesus is in control. And what you used to do don't even matter. Because as long as you're doing what God said, that's all. Can I preach today? Oh, yeah. Constantly renew your mind. The Bible says, be ye transformed. The Bible says, baby, it said, by the renewing of your mind. Yeah, some traditions are good, but some traditions ain't going to work with your new mind in Christ. Yeah. We have to change the way we see things. You have to believe that God is working everything out for your good. Yeah, yeah, guess what? His thoughts are of good towards you and not evil. You got to leave your past and move into the future with a new mindset. You can't be going forward with your old mindset in the past. You can only be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to change your mind. And declare that you are new. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yes, yes. The reason you act the way you act is because that's the way you think in your heart. It's time to renew your mind. The reason you treat people the way you treat them is because that's in your heart. You got to renew your heart. Renew your mind. You are what you think about yourself. The more you entertain certain thoughts in your mind, the more you become them. You got to learn how to cast down the thoughts and imaginations that don't line up with the word of God. When thoughts of defeat and discouragement into your mind, you have to dismiss them right away. As a matter of fact, when people come to you and their thoughts of discouragement are trying to enter your mind, you got to plead the blood of Jesus and dismiss them away from you. There are some family members and church folk that will discourage you but you got to disconnect yourself. You got to get out of their presence and step into the presence of God. Yeah, you got to think positive. Think on the good things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can I preach today? Yeah, yeah you can't take on an old mindset into a new situation. You need to reprogram way you think. You have to change your perspective and the way you see things. Look, look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Wake your neighbor up. Say, I'm changing my mind to take on the mind of Christ. They woke up. They are. They are. Yeah, you got to change. Change your mind. I'm out of here. Like, let's go on. The book of 2 Corinthians, fifth chapter, 17 verse says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, y'all heard that before? Yes. He's a new creation, new creature. Guess what? 
old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become. Yeah, God has given us new vision, new perspectives, new ideas, new mindsets, new directions, and new dreams. And so, Macedonia, I declare today that God is renewing our mind and giving us a new beginning today. We are new. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor we're new today. We're new. In the book of Isaiah, in the 43rd chapter, God said, Behold, I do a new thing, and it shall spring forth. Look at your neighbor. Don't be 
Will there be one? Will there be one? Will there be one? Will there be one? We all for Christ. We all for Christ.
God, we thank you for your healing power. We thank you for the manifestation of your Holy Spirit. God, we ask you now if there's anyone who's sick among us right now. God, that you heal their bodies. Touch them now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. God, we give you a praise in advance for a supernatural healing, God, to fall fresh on their lives. God, we thank you for keeping us. God, when odds were against us, God, when the doctors didn't know what to do, God, you kept us. We say thank you. God, we ask you, God, for a, a healing that will take place in the land. Change minds, God. Transform hearts, God. God, renew spirit. God, we thank you for your word today. God, teaching us that there is a new beginning. God, if we transform our mind, if we let our mind be in you, God, that you'll keep us in perfect peace. We say thank you, God. God, we thank you for our youth today. God, keep them covered in your blood. God, keep their mind. God, when they want to be like everybody else, God, you let them know that they belong to you. God, God, we, we ask you now, God, to take the taste of being in port out of their out of their concept. God, let them know that if they have you, they'll be all that they can be. With you by their side. God, we ask you right now to, to bring up self-esteem, God, in our you. God, bring up self-esteem. God, give them joy. God, give their minds peace. God, we thank you for keeping our, our kids, God, as they went through a trying time of schooling, God. God, we thank you for keeping them. God, we thank you for our educators, God. God, we thank you. God, let this church go. Be what you're calling to be in these last and evil days. God bless the members of this church. God, let this church be a light to the community. God, let this church be a place that God, even when they enter the parking lot, they will be instantaneously saved. God, that your anointing will fall over. God, that you will break every yoke. God, the devil thought that he had us, God, but we thank you for your edge of protection. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And God, as we leave this place now from your presence, we ask you for traveling grace. Guide us and protect us. God, cover us in your blood. We'll be so careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Present you before, before his presence and exceed it, Lord. Hence now and forever. Let everyone who love the Lord say amen. amen.
Thank you.